high horsepower V8, great sounding, adrenaline building motor in an E46, but make it look pretty much like it came from BMW like that. It's something we haven't done before. We've done a lot of project cars. This is kind of on another level. So one of the big challenges with this build is the clearance in the engine compartment around the steering. I like the progress and I'm seeing progress, but I'm also seeing not a lot of progress because like we're weeks into this and you know, I want to see like parts done and parts getting bolted on. are amazing. Well, all I know is I'm ready for a tequila. Must be nice where you never have to duck at anything. All right, they made these entrances for me. Do you think when we go out like this, people think we're twins? People have actually commented on how they believe we're twins. Turn a corn. No. Yeah. We got get the motor situated exactly final, exactly where we need it, right? Kim's gonna build the engine mounts that just hold it in there. I feel like the guys have been talking about a ste the steering column way more than I've ever heard anybody talk about a steering column. Well, because number one rule is I don't want that, I don't want anything non-factory about the steering column. Like, they can move it a little bit, but I want it, I want all everything direct, because I need that steering feel, right? Totally. That's the most important. Once you do that, we have the transmission bracket. All right, so it's only four things, five things. That's it. Just, you can just watch, and if, it's, even, if this is a success, you can take credit. If it's not, you can blame me. That's what you usually do. I can't lift this glass. I think we're being recorded. <laughs> so. Probably a spy. Somebody's gonna try to build a better turnicorn. That's what I was thinking, I mean. The race, the, race, the race to the ultimate turnicorn. It's like the race to the moon. Look between the chips. Look great. This is a huge deal that we're doing now. Like we're talking about where we're fitting the engine. And we're talking about how that steering shaft is gonna get through the headers. And once once we actually made physical space for it and removed the wall so it could fit in the space, then we need to place the engine perfectly in the engine bay. It has to work with the radiator, the transmission, the exhaust, the steering. So it kind of it can be moved in any which direction. Uh, left, right, back, forward, up and down, it needs to be placed in space. So uh, if you take a little bit of room from the from the front, if you put it too far back, you won't have any room for the drive shaft. If you put it too far forward, you're going to cramp your radiator. So you need to find the perfect place so there's room for everything. Once we fit it and once it sits in there, I mean, that's it. It's not like we can do it again. Like, it has to be perfect. Yeah, so I had to make motor mount brackets, which uh, I always start with cardboard, because cardboard is, uh, is, is easy to change. You can make five templates and just scrap it if you want to. Once you transfer it to metal, it takes longer to cut it, it takes longer to change it. All I was worried about is getting uh, points of reference on the motor and the motor mount. Those two spaces is really what I was looking for. All right, so yeah, this is what I did. I made some motor mount brackets just to put the motor in its place. I welded off the side of the motor to the motor mounts um, and just to kind of hang the motor for now so we have something to go off of. I think I got it in a really good place right now. Height-wise, it's perfect. It's not too low. It, it's got a good clearance off the subframe. And uh, obviously, this is not super pretty, but I wasn't really worried about, um, worried about being pretty. I just kind of wanted it to get it into place and get it uh, nice and centered. Yeah, I wanted to get it in just so I could get the engine hoist and the jack off of it, because now I can move the car up and down without having to have the engine hoist constantly attached to it. It looks great, because once we get that steering column installed and we get the header placed, I can take those mounts and at least have the point A to point B area figured out. I can send it off to be improved on. So what's the plan? Just uh, taking those mounts and just using that reference and, and build it out of what are we doing? No, we're probably going to make everything roughly fit with all the components in and then go from there because okay. we need the full picture. If, if we find out he builds a mount and then we put the header in there and we don't we think hit the header, room. then we got to restart. So we'll trim right. everything, install everything in the area that we know we have to install there and then fit the mounts around it. 
could have lowered the engine further down and then made room for the air box, but then the oil pan would be hanging underneath the car and you don't want the oil pan to be the lowest point of the car because any, any bump, any speed bumps could potentially tear the oil pan off the car. So right now it's hitting right here. So what's happening, you see that brace that goes across right there? That's right now, that's what touches. It lays right on top there. So we can take that off and that'll give us another half an inch, three quarters of an inch. That might not be enough, but at least that will get us closer. We might have to re remove the one further in because I think once we take this out, uh, the next one's gonna hit, it's gonna be back here. But we can trim that down a little bit and make some more room there. And hopefully that'll be enough. If not, we're gonna have to uh, uh, change this, change the uh, scoop on the engine. The E90, the car that has this engine in it, has a bigger hood scoop, or has a bigger hood bolt. So like going with the bigger one kind of fits the engine, I think, and fits like the bigger, more horsepower. I think it should have a bigger scoop, but yeah, you know, bigger. just to kind of show that like, yeah, it's a it's monster a, engine in here. Yeah. I think that would be you cool. You want a little bit more aggressive, the M3, but a subtle, a yes. subtle, uh, yeah, make it look stock, but definitely like a, a something to show it that there's a there's a big motor under here. Yeah, exactly. The engine kind of sits very nicely in this area, so we're okay with compromising other parts of the build or to get the engine right where it needs to be, so we don't interfere with the steering at all for the vehicle. We've been working on this for a little while. This this was the stock one that came on the car, and we cannot use this. But Drew did some research on it, and he found out that uh, these par these parts that we got might work. How's it looking? Uh, it's good. I just put the uh, transmission cross member in, and it it fits like it was meant for it. Nice. Where, where did you say awesome. Where did you say that thing came from? Uh, so it's from a E46 uh, 330D uh, diesel car. All right, if it fits like it was meant for the swap, it's, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so I was just doing some research and found that some other people had used this same cross member. I think actually just one other person. So I figured we'd order it up and give it a shot. Yeah, to find that in like the first shot is amazing. Yeah, I think we got pretty lucky, so. But you can see where, uh, where the transmission mounts would end up on the star car versus where they end up on this transmission. So the bolt, the bolts are the, the the mounts are a lot further apart. All we're really trying to do is give us a little bit more room. So uh, yeah, this I guess I'll just show you. So the steering column would naturally come at about this angle down to this component here. But what we're trying to do is get the steering column to come closer to the frame rail here. Uh, by straightening out and elongating those holes where it mounts there, we can bring the steering column over about an inch to the left, which basically allows us to run more header through this location here. So we're basically trying to get all available space to us to use for the headers because it's such a tight area and we have so much going on in this area. And that's why we trim this bracket here, bringing a smaller brake booster here. And that's all to get as much room as we possibly can in this area. We're trying to keep the steering as stock as possible, except just trying to move it over a little bit just to give us some more room. Yeah, which will not affect the feel of the vehicle or our response. It's just, just a little bit of geometry change. Yeah, did you look at it? Take, no, take a look, not. see what you think either slot this yeah, and yeah the only problem is you have nothing to go on right here the bolt is basically the bolt is basically all the way against the side of it yeah so we would have to take this wall off yep. slot it but I think and then if reinforce you take, it into like another wall yes. build another wall on it if you take the wall off you're gonna have to make it stronger again because you don't want just a flat piece of metal yep. I have to move these holes over just to angle the steering column uh, a little bit differently so trying to move this over without uh, hitting the bracket here, making room for it somehow here. I'm gonna have to cut it or slot it or both of it. And I'm trying to make that uh, work and look nice at the same time. Might be a little challenging. I want to keep the function of the, uh, of the steering column intact. So once you pull it back, if you want to pull the steering wheel closer to you, it would hit the bolt. So I need to figure out how to put those bolts in, but without it hitting this bracket. 
we were at a point where the, the challenge was to fit the engine, steering column, and exhaust all in the same place. We needed something super creative. You have this much room in our engine compartment. Yep. I think it's this much. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Literally, we have to fit the headers, the steering shaft, and the motor mount. Yep, all in the same spot. All in the same spot. And we can't mess up the steering, so we can't change the steering. So we need more room. There's a company that my friend works for, and what they do is they have a software program that you'll enter the parameters of like point A and point B and, and what you need. Yep. And their, their software will organically kind of grow a design that's strong and light, right? And the best part is, after they grow it digitally, they print it, like, really? out of metal. What they, uh, okay. So, we call them up, they push a button, they grow apart, then they print it, we install it, Easy. and then we drive the car. Easy. Hey, Jake. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Thanks for uh, coming up on such short notice. Let's, uh, let's go chat with Will and see what's going on. Hey, Will, how's it going? What's happening? So I got something for you. Yeah? Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> There's a lot of geometry and stuff involved in there to, to really uh, get everything to fit. So what we can actually do is uh, scan these interface locations and then uh, grow geometry in 3D, uh, which would uh, allow us to kind of simplify that whole design process itself. We'll have a way to uh, really make this a, an efficient design while also bringing it to a modern day. Uh, appeal. You know, nobody's done it this way. This is going to allow us to build a smaller engine mount and give us more room for the exhaust. And what do we need? I mean, the number one thing we need is more room for that exhaust so it doesn't hit that steering shaft. I hope that desktop metal is going to be the savior in this one. I think that's going to be the turning point when we get some stuff printed up and, and start building the exhaust. So we're taking the ferro arm, which is a 3D laser scanner, and going into the engine to really see what the features are inside. We just spent a little time at Desktop Metal. Now we're headed, headed back to the shop. We're stuck in a bunch of traffic on a Friday afternoon. The challenge was to get a uh, shifter in here that would fit with both the chassis and the transmission. I'm really hoping this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna work. I spent a lot of time on this, so. We looked at some other options for the AC compressor, and one of the options was to use the AC compressor that the race team uses on the M6 GT3, but it's a much smaller unit and it might not provide enough cooling for this car.